So one more time, God has given up to us the time to come together, to praise Him, to worship Him, give Him all the glory and honor. But today, that last song that we took it, bless the Lord, O my soul, that is really appreciating in the sight of God because you are singing from the bottom of your soul and thanking the Lord for what God has done in your life. But today, again, I would like to repeat that today, the entire human race is suffering all around the world. People are not only dying with viruses, but there are untimely death is also coming. People are afraid of dying. People are also dying with some other problems. People are dying because of their ages. People are dying with heart attacks. Death is taking place. Problems are taking place. The human race is suffering all around the world. It is not only during this period that we are seeing around five to six months. No. The death, the problems, the sorrows, the pain, the agony is in human life right from the day one. The earth, the world is created. <clears throat> but the Bible clearly says, though the human beings are suffering on the earth, you and I we are suffering also, but Christians have a privilege to understand. And especially the believers has to understand. What they should understand, that is what God is going to tell us today. The word of the Lord clearly says, we Christians, and especially the believers, must understand that in this world, as long as we live, surely there are going to be problems. Many think like that, that only those who are not knowing Christ, and those who do not accept Jesus Christ, those who are not born again, only they will suffer, we will not suffer. No, it's not like that. The day that you enter into this world, suffering begins. But Bible, Bible clearly says we are bound to face lots of problems into this world. We are bound to face trials. We are bound to face tribulations, sufferings, struggles, and sorrows and pain and agony. Never forget that Jesus said in this world you will have trials and tribulations. But we have good cheer. I have overcome the world. And because I have overcome the world, Jesus said, you can also overcome the world. So when you hear this word, is it for only for believers or unbelievers or for Christians or for whom? The one who reads the word of God, one who understands the sacrifice of Jesus, one who knows what Jesus Christ of Nazareth has done, for everybody this promise is there. But you and I, we are privileged people because we know Christ, we have accepted Him as our Lord and Savior. We are born again in the Spirit and water. And we are walking according to the teachings and laws and commandments of God. Bible clearly says the second page. That many other challenges are there into this world. Not only this. Not only trial. Not only tribulation. But many other challenges are there. And those challenges are for whom? Not for anyone. But these challenges are for those who are truly Believing in Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord clearly says, those challenges are family problems, conflicts in relationship, marriage problems, personality problem, person, person to person, then financial problem, jobs, no jobs, job losses, financial, actually, gains and financial losses, business, business failures, religion hatred, religion problems, evil attacks, diseases, sicknesses, and then the Bible continues to say that every man and every woman, especially the believers, that means those who are seated here, you are a blessed people to hear this word of God, and for them the Bible says, remember the wars and the rumors of war, calamities, earthquakes, tsunamis, floods, pestilences, and plagues and such kind, even death. In all these situations, one has to understand God has already said, Jesus has already said, in this world you will have all these trials and tribulations. All these sufferings will be there. People will be having problems in their own life, in their marriages, in their bodies, in their family life, in their relationship, in their palaces, in their jobs. In every way, we are going to have troubles and trials and tribulation and suffering 
this is not because you are Christian, you are not going to undergo this suffering. No, you have to and we will undergo because Jesus has said, in this world you will have trials and tribulation. When you hear the voice of God, when you hear the voice of Jesus, when you understand that Jesus has spoken into the Holy Bible and let us understand what is the principal things that God wants to know. The God Almighty tells you, you shall be able to understand that this is spoken unto you so that you will be able to understand all that I have told you right from the day one, from the day of this creation. God has created heaven and earth. God has created man and woman. God has created first man for Adam and Eve. And it was a plan of God. I also spoke on the other day that it was plan of God that man and woman shall be able to understand the plan of God. Man and woman able to understand the sufferings that will come in their life. So also the sufferings and the trial and the tribulation when it comes, how the man and woman shall be able to stand. Today many people say, oh this is happening a lot in the world, earthquakes are coming, blood is coming, what shall we do? Why God allows? But we are not able to understand who is the major cause behind all this. The Bible says the major cause is nobody else but the devil. That God wants everyone to understand, especially the believers, that all these problems, the suffering, the sorrows, the trials, the tribulations, the sickness, the, the pestilence, the plagues, the viruses, every such problems are coming from the devil. Devil is always willing right from the day one that when God created man and woman, his work began 24 hours a day. He wanted to destroy the mankind. And therefore this work of the devil started from the day one that God created man and woman. He started working right from the beginning from with the first man and first woman. That is called Adam and Eve. The word of God clearly says, Therefore, you have a responsibility. Every one of you have a responsibility as a Christian. Every one of you have a responsibility as a believer. And what is the responsibility? The Bible says, Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible says, God has given us the free will. The free will means free choices. You choose what you want. Even to Adam, when he created, he gave the choices. Remember, all of this is yours, but the middle of the garden, there is a tree. And the fruit of the tree, you must not touch it, you must not eat it. But choice is yours. God left them free, and they were free in that Eden garden. The tree was not outside the garden, the tree was inside the garden. The, the, the tree was not hidden from Adam and Eve. No, it was open before Adam and Eve's eyes. It was a choice for Adam and Eve to select what they want. And the Bible says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So therefore God said in the beginning and from the beginning that one has to understand to live in the spirit and walk in the spirit. This is the plan of God that you and I should be able to live in the spirit and walk in the spirit. More than living in the spirit, God is saying, what? walk in the spirit so that you shall not fulfill the desire of your body. You shall not fulfill the desire of your heart. You shall not fulfill the desire of your mind. You shall not fulfill the thought that comes in your mind. You shall not fulfill the desire that comes sometimes good and sometimes evil. Most of the times it gives you different type of understanding and temptation. So the Bible clearly says in Galatians chapter 5 or 16, you must learn. Paul says especially that you Galatians, the church of Galatia, you must learn to walk in the spirit. You are walking already in the body without telling. You are already living in the body. Soul and spirit is inside. Inside this body there is soul. Inside this body there is spirit. You are already knowing this and you are living and you are walking in the body. But God has a greater plan to tell you. And what is that greater plan? that you must learn to walk in the spirit. Though you live in the body and walk in the body, you must learn to walk in the spirit. Why? That is what we are going to see tonight. And the Bible says, Paul also was talking to another church. That was the church of Romans. Church of Rome was strong. 
Church of Romans, they had all type of practices and religions. Church of Rome had a traditional practices. Till today it's going on. Church of Rome was having a religious practices. They said whatsoever it may be, the traditional, the religion, the historical, all this type of religion practices must be followed. Paul is from Rome. When he understood that it is wrong according to the word of God, Paul started making a decision that I must go to Rome and I must preach the gospel so that they shall understand that man shall not live in darkness but in the light. And therefore Paul made a decision and he comes to Rome. In Romans chapter 13 verses 10, 11 and 12. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is the salvation nearer than when we believe. The Bible clearly says, Paul started writing and telling the people of Romans, or Rome, that you must be able to understand about the salvation. You must be able to understand for what purpose Jesus came here. You must be able to understand that Jesus shed the blood on the cross of Calvary. You must be able to believe in the Lord Jesus. More than all your ritual practices, you must be able to understand the plan and the purpose of God the Father for sending Jesus Christ on the earth. And after saying that, Paul says one more word. That word is very important. That word is for you. That word is for me. That word is for everyone. That word is for every listener tonight. And what, what the Bible says through Paul, verse 13, 12, sorry, 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Remember what he says. He says, remember the day is there. You can see and walk in the day. Night is there which is of the darkness. But at the same time, you must be able to understand. This word was given by Paul to the church of Romans so that they shall understand the spirituality that God wants to teach them. He was telling every Romans and every brother and sister today that you shall be able to understand that you shall not walk in darkness but you shall be able to walk in the light. And what is that light? This light is not normal. This light is not the light that you put on in the houses. This light is not light that sun is shining and moon is reflecting. This light is not the light that you can see around and you can walk around. This light is totally different. And Paul explains this light. This light is a special light. This light is the light of an armor. And therefore he says, verse 12, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Work of darkness, work of wrong deeds, totally leave it aside. And then, And let us put on the armor of light. Let us put on the armor of light. Today's message, I would like to present every brother and every sister, that we should carry the armor of God. We should use the armor of God and we shall be victorious. Amen. Say amen. amen. We shall use the armor of God and we shall be victorious. Amen. We shall use the armor of God, we shall be successful. Amen. We shall use the armor of God, we shall be saved. We shall use the armor of God, we shall increase our faith. Amen. We shall use the armor of God, we shall be protected. We shall use the armor of God and we shall fight the battle against the devil. Amen. Not against the people, not against the religion, not against any man, not against any woman, not against any man enemy, woman enemy. No, we don't have that. We only have one enemy, the Christians and the believers that believe and that enemy is nobody else but the devil, but the Satan. And you have to be ready for that. Therefore Paul says, he says, you must be spiritually strong and you must carry the spiritual armor of light so that you shall take away the darkness that works against your life. Bring darknesses in your life or in your family life or personal life. Today so many of us, we are not able to understand. We carry a light, but we are not able to analyze about that light. This light is not normal. This light is very powerful. When you stand in that light, darkness cannot come closer to you. When you stand with that armor of light, power of darkness cannot stand with you. When you stand with that light, armor of light, the power of God comes upon you and you stand with the power of God. Therefore he said, you must 
spiritually carry the armor of light so we can stand and we can withstand the voice of the devil we can withstand the problems of the world we can withstand every trouble of the world we can withstand with the war we can withstand with the rumors of war we can withstand with pestilences we can withstand with earthquakes we can withstand with all type of tsunamis and all type of floods rains and even plagues and viruses the next thing the bible clearly says Therefore, we have to use the armor of God to have a victorious life. My brothers, my sisters, some Christians do not read the word of God. They are ignorant about the word of God and they are failure in their life. They are good Christians. They love God, but they are failure. The children do not believe in God. They say, we don't believe in God. Because we parents have made the mistake not giving them the word, not showing them the way, not carrying that armor of life. The children remain in darkness. Sometimes it happens the only husband is very clever and having the word of God but the family is unsaved still. Sometimes it is the wife who is saved but the children are unsaved. Sometimes it is like that that we are knowing the word of God and we have so much of fellowship but our relatives and friends are still unsaved. The unsaved word comes under the bracket the power of darknesses. They are still under darknesses but we carry the armor of light. The Bible says however Paul writes one more word and before uh, instead of reading more words of Paul let us look, look unto Peter also. Paul has written this that you should carry the armor of light. Then Peter also tells us. Peter is one among the apostles. These two apostles were very great. Paul was very mighty, powerful in his prayer and in the ministry of sickness healing. Similar way Peter also. They had a different type of ministry and Peter explains in 1st Peter chapter 5. Therefore, what Peter says, therefore Peter says, if you are a born again child, if you know Jesus Christ of the Lord, if you are born again in the water, if you are born again in the spirit and water, then you must know one important thing that I want to tell you. You Christians, you believers, and you should know this word, and he says that we must be, verse 6, 7 and 8. 7 and 8 you can read. Cast, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Cast all your cares upon him. We should not care about the things that is happening all around. Oh, that fellow died, these people died, that thing happening, that thing. It may come to you also. You may be one, your house may be one among the tsunamis. Your house may be one among in that rain. You cannot stop the rain that's coming from heaven. You cannot stop the flood that with your own hands. You cannot protect yourself and your families. But you have a solution. Every one of you as a Christian, as a born again, you have a solution to protect your life, protect your families, protect from danger, accident, part of darknesses, part of evil, part of all calamities, even these plagues and viruses. You have that. And you have to listen to Peter, what Peter says. He says, therefore you cast your care upon God, who careth for you. Next. Be sober. Be sober. What exactly the Bible says? Be sober, it means be normal. Don't be a problem. Let not pride enter your heart. Let not jealousy continue in your life. Let not be hated there. Do not get drunk. Do not get intoxicated. Sober means do not get intoxicated. Then, be vigilant. Be vigilant means be alert. People have wisdom, knowledge and understanding talk about tomorrows, how, what they should do and all that. God says to us, do not worry about tomorrow. But one thing God tells, but be alert about. Be alert about all the situation that is happening all around you. You should be able to understand what's happening in the neighbor. You should be able to understand what's happening in your city, what's happening all around the world. So also in your family, with your children, with your husband, with your wife, you should be alert. Therefore the Bible says, be vigilant. Then, because your adversary is the devil. Because your adversary is the devil. The one who is always trying to fight against you. The one who wants to destroy your life. The one who wants to destroy your family life. The one who wants to destroy your children. The one who wants to create a trouble in your family life. The one who wants to create a trouble in your job life and finances. The one who wants to disturb your you know, businesses. The one who wants to create all type of relative problems and troubles. You must be able to understand these are all from the devil. 
And that's why many of us are still suffering in the same problems. We are not come out of the problem because we did not understand the adversity and we did not take upper hand, we did not fight against that adversity, we did not overcome that adversity because we never knew what to do. We never knew what to do. We never knew how I can come out of this promise. And the Bible clearly says there is only one way for all the Christians and believers that is to use the armor of God and you can be victorious. Amen. Say Amen. 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 Let's close our eyes and bow down in the breast of God. Say after me, Father I thank you. Father, I thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. I will use the armor of God. I will use the armor of God. From this day onwards. From this day onwards. And I will be victorious. And I will be victorious. Lord, Lord. Days are gone. Days are gone. Weeks are gone. Weeks are gone. Months are gone. Months are gone. Years are gone. Years are gone. Our problems are not solved. Our problems are not solved. But today, and today, we understand the word of God. We understand your scriptures that we can be victorious when we use the armor of God. Help me to use the armor of God. I shall be victorious. Help us to use the armor of God and we shall be victorious. In Jesus Almighty name, we believe and we pray. Let's all shout. Amen. Amen. One more time. Amen. One more time. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We shall be victorious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We shall be successful. Hallelujah. We shall be saved. Hallelujah. We shall be healthy. Hallelujah. We shall be free from the attack of the devil. Hallelujah. And therefore the word of God teaches us that what Peter said in verse 8. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Walketh about, walketh about, seeking whom he may Walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. devour. The devil has not forgotten you. The devil has not forgotten that you are a child of God. You may think that now oh, I am born again, I have Jesus in my heart and devil cannot touch me. No, you have to always remember, I have to be victorious in my life. I must carry the armor of God. I must protect myself. I must have the word of God. The armor of God is nothing else, but the armor of God is mentioned for us through the word of God. God is teaching us what are the armors. Why the armors is important. Many Christians, they say we are going morning also service, evening also service. But brother, we are facing this problem. How come? Because they don't carry the armor of God. When they go, they go normally and they come back normally. Whenever children of God, you and I, whenever we attend the service, whenever we sit in the place of God, whenever we hear the word of God, we shall never go back home same way. We shall go back home delivered. We shall go back home safe. We shall go back home with financial blessing. We shall go back, our job shall come back. We shall go back totally healed, totally delivered. And miracles shall happen in our life. Amen. Therefore God is saying, read that word. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking who he may devour. One more time loudly. Be sober. Be sober. Don't get into any other entanglement. Be sober. Be Don't vigilant. get intoxicated. Okay. Be vigilant. Be alert. You should not be telling here after that, I know, I know, no. You should be alert for every situation of your mind. Wars, rumors of war, rain, flood, earthquakes, calamities. Unwanted plagues, unwanted viruses, we have to use our wisdom and we have to be alert about all that. The next thing. Because your adversary is the devil. Why we have to be alert? Why we have to be sober? Why we have to be careful? Why though we are children of God having a great God in us? Why? Because we have to be understanding that the devil is always trying to do something harm to us. It is not only to you. It's not only to you because you are a child of God. No, every man, every human being on this earth is suffering today. Everyone has that trial and that tribulation today. So, children of God, the devil is more troubling them. The children of God, the believers, he has more trouble for them 
than the normal human because some of them are already in his captivity but we are totally free from his captivity he is always seeking whom i shall catch whom i shall put into problem whom i shall put into sicknesses whom i shall catch and give him intoxicate or drinking practice whom i shall catch and break up that problem and trouble them so that they shall not be lost my brothers and sisters we can fight against this devil with the plan of god we can fight against this devil with the armor of god and therefore what is this armor the bible clearly says to fight against the power of the darkness to fight against this devil who is roaring and like roaring lion roaming all around here he will not preach the word unless and until the lord comes even until the lord is come again he will continue his work he is not stopping the work till the new heaven and new earth till this entire world is ending the devil's work is not going to stop the final ending will be when jesus put the devil totally into the lake of fire this entire work will be finished will be having a victorious life new heaven and new earth will begin but that the bible clearly says fight the good fight have the armor of god in your life and what is that armor james explains very well james said in james chapter 4 verse 7 Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil. Then what James writes in book of James that one has to submit himself to the living God. Submit yourself to the God, to God. Therefore, sorry, submit yourself therefore to God and resist the devil. This is your job. This is your job till you go and meet Jesus Christ our Lord. And therefore this has to continue in your life and my life. You have to resist the devil and you have to stand against him. and you have to fight the battle but you have a one important thing in your life you must come closer to god you cannot fight against the devil when you are far away from the devil he will be but when you are closer to god you will not fight but god will fight the battle with the devil but you will be victorious you will be successful you will be safe your will will be strong your body will not be attacked by the devil sicknesses will not come to you evil power will not come to you your family will not be divided powers of darkness will never touch your sons and daughters they will be protected and they will be safe therefore one has to come closer to god today we are learning one important thing that whatever situation may be i will go to god i will come closer to god i will start living with god i will start reading the word of god how a man come closer to god how a woman can come closer to god only by the word of god a woman has to read the word of god a man has to read the word of god what do the laws and commandments of teachings god is teaching you you must be able to observe then you must be able to pray also so the bible clearly says increase your faith be strong in your faith read the word of god day and night meditate upon the word of god pray all the time so also keep on fasting and pray so that you shall become with all of these activities closer to god you shall not be away from god but you shall be closer to god you read the bible less you pray less you do not meditate upon the word of god you do not have anything to do with the word you do not have anything to do with the laws of god and commandments of god naturally you will become a dull man today if you want to be healthy you have to do some exercise if your body has to be strong you have to do exercise you walk 20 minutes a day you eat good food you eat something which will not harm your body you want to keep your body full you also want to do some exercise you also want to train your body with the exercise so that you shall be able to sleep well when you are caring about your body so much you must also be able to care about your soul you must always be always be able to care about the devil who is coming and harming you you must be able to learn to use the armor of god and fight the battle against the devil and this is what james is telling us that you should submit yourself unto god and this is the devil but also says then you will have a victory jem says then you will have a victory bible says in gospel of st john chapter 8 bible says that when man wants to have a victory through using the armor of god he must be able to know and he must be able to know the truth if he does not know the truth he will not win the battle he will still lose the battle that's why many christians today are having so many problems many christians are suffering and they are christians but they are suffering why truth is not there why what of god is not there why meditation is not there why prayer is normal prayer 
Why? Bread is religious bread. Why? Because they do not learn, and they do not learn to pray with power, but they cannot fight the battle against the devil. Therefore, the Bible clearly says, John chapter 8, verse 31 or 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. The Bible says, many Jews believed on Jesus Christ our Lord. And then Jesus looked unto them and said, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, If you continue in my word, Then are ye my disciples indeed. Then only you are my disciples. Then only you are true Christians. If you continue in my word, Today many believers do not read the Bible, And they think that I am a believer, I am born again, My work is over. But to that believer and brother and sister, I want to tell you, You are standing on a sinking sand. You are not standing on a rock. Or even if you think that you are standing on a rock, That rock is cracked rock. You may go any time down that you will not know it. Be careful. The Bible clearly says, that you must be able to stand on the word of God. You must be able to hear the word of God and stand on the word of God. Say it, brother. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Then the Bible says that many Jews believed on Jesus because he was doing signs and wonders and miracles. Then he looked unto them and said, If ye continue in my word, If you continue in my word, Then are ye my disciples. Then you are my disciples. Then you are my believers. Then you are my children. Then you are my sons. If you do not continue in the word of God, your thoughts are there that my God is there. But you do not know what you have done wrong against him. What he has given unto you to stand with the power. What he has given unto you to stand on the rock of your faith. Your foundation is totally weak and you are allowing the devil to shake you well. My brothers, the next thing the Bible says, verse 32, 31, and, and you shall know the truth. 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 And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall set you free. What is this freedom that Jesus is speaking about? What was necessary for Jesus to speak at that time? Say that you shall know the truth. People are started believing. The Bible says Jews started believing in Jesus. Then why Jesus said that you shall know the truth? It means you read the Bible, but you do not know the truth. You understand the Bible. But you don't follow the truth. You sometimes read the Bible in such a way, it does not go here, does not go here. It just goes out of your mouth and you don't even hear what you're saying. Sometimes you don't have time to read the Bible. You just read it one sentence and go to work. Sometimes you read the entire chapter. But the entire chapter, there are so many topics, you have not taken one topic for your life and added for your life. You have not added that paragraph to your life or your children's life or your family life and you are the same, sailing in the same boat. And what if God is read? What if God is prepared? What if God is uh, actually read for the family? But the Bible says, you did not understand the truth in that word of God. When you understand the truth, you separate yourself from whatever problem you are facing and you will be victorious. Therefore the Bible says, you shall know the truth, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen. That's why one has to understand the truth. Then the Bible clearly says, when you know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. After that, Paul says to the church of Ephesia, Paul declares, then when you know the truth, you can carry the armor. You can use the armor. You can use the armor that God has given to us. And with that armor, you can be victorious. And therefore Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18, and we shall close down. Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brethren. Then Paul says to the church of Ephesians, after having all this conclusion, remember he started from 1 Corinthians, that is the church. And then he comes to church of Ephesians. And what does he tell them? He tells them, Finally, my brethren. Finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. You cannot become strong unless and until you read the word of God. You cannot become strong unless and until you have the word of God in you. You cannot become strong. Yesterday also we had a message. And we had a message yesterday also. And that message was telling, be strong and be courageous. When you are strong, you encourage your life for faith. You have faith in the Lord. 
when you are strong you have the word of god you have the reading of word you fast and pray you pray all the time you meditate upon the word of god day and night and you hear the word of god you praise and worship him you give him praise and glory and honor that is the way you become strong and then you become courageous today we are saying that paul is saying you must become strong be strong in the lord oh you must not say yes i am strong i am the, the lord is over us he is found in the book of the bible and he is a living god he will talk to you the bible says be strong in the lord and in the power of his might in the power of his might our lord is not armor he is not a normal person he is not a person like you he is a very mighty and almighty god bible clearly says he is all mighty you cannot imagine your words and your thoughts are not enough to imagine about god the father that's why many times before i could become a believer i was always thinking god is somewhere million miles away we cannot see him but now i know god is not million miles away but god is way he is in our hearts in our bodies this body is the temple of the living god and mind changed when i read the bible similar way the bible says be strong in the lord and be in the power of his might then the bible says put on the whole armor of god come on 11 11 <coughs> yeah continue the 10 to 18 put on the whole armor of god put on the full all armor of god you must have the whole armor given for you you must have it is like you are a soldier fighting the battle against the devil god has put you before and god is standing behind you first practice i will come to rescue you but it is yours but practice god is saying to you jesus is also saying same thing you carry my armor go and fight with the devil don't worry if you lose i will fight with the devil and you will win you will not going to be you are not going to be a loser then but one thing is there jesus is teaching us god is teaching us through disciples god is teaching us through paul god is teaching us tonight what is saying put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against the flesh and blood but against principalities we don't wrestle against man and woman we don't wrestle against wife and husband we don't wrestle against any enemy that is man and woman but we wrestle against the power of principalities what is working behind there which power is working behind there people use court power people use police station power a power people use society power people use religious power people use politician power so many powers they are using it and they come and fight against one another my brothers my sister god is telling you you need not to worry about you only take my armor take the whole armor out god and then but against the principalities against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places you take the whole armor and start fighting against all this no need to go and fight with anybody else then the next thing the bible clearly says again the part reading verse 18 therefore take unto you the whole armor of god bible says and paul is writing to you and i through writing to the church of ephesia saying that therefore take unto you you take yourself the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand you may be able to withstand in the evil day evil days today also evil day all around the world and very few testimonies you can hear that people those who had this virus problem they were in the hospital how they came out but many testimonies you will be able to hear the reason they are some are strengthening themselves by their own some are strengthening by their own strength of the body some of them are knowing the things how to fight against this virus some of them are fighting properly with the medicine that they are taking in their body some of them are praying and those who are praying surely they will find the victory of god the bible clearly says therefore you must be able to fight in, in, in the days of evil the days of evil is not going to get over it's going to continue it's going to continue the virus may finish but the evil days are not going to finish many other evil days are going to come many other plagues are going to come many other tsunamis are going to come many other rain and floods are going to come these evil things are not going to stop but the man who puts his trust in god the man and woman who has the whole armor of god 
they only can be strong. They can be protected. Why? They have the whole armor of God. Whole armor of God protects them from head to toe. If they have little armor of God, little protection, little problem, big problem, small problem will keep coming. But when you have the whole armor of God, you are protecting your life in a full sense. Your finances are protected. Your families are protected. Your life is protected. You are protecting your own brother, brother, sister's family's life also. And having done all to stand. Having done all, you will still stand. You will fight against the evil days and you will still stand. Then rest. Stand therefore, having your loins girt apart with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And therefore the Bible clearly says, one has to understand what is this whole armor of God. I will just read it in short for you. The whole armor of God is the sword of the spirit. The first offensive weapon. That is the word of God. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. Prayer and supplication is nothing else but praying all the time. Reading the word of God and praying. And intercessing for your problems. Helping of salvation. And that is from the word of God, the salvation that you have received. You have to cover your thoughts and you shall not be given thoughts to the devil and all unwanted doctrines. Remember, their days are going to come. Many churches will be established, but many churches will not be established on the word of God. They'll be established according to the fashion of the world. Many people are started that we know prosperity gospel. Prosperity gospel, financial gospel, victory gospel. So many things they are saying it, but nothing is connected to the world. People are throwing money at somebody's feet and they are thinking they are doing the offerings. They don't know that it's not to be done like that. Money, property, silver, gold, everything belongs to God. We cannot put it into any man's or any woman's feet. You have to understand what exactly and how exactly you have to use. The Bible clearly says, therefore shield of faith you have to carry. When there is a faith, you are able to fight the battle against the evil successfully. What is that faith tells you? I am of God. God is with me. I am a child of God. I will win the battle because my God will fight the battle for me and victory is mine. Sure, that is what is the faith. Blessedness and righteousness shall continue in your life. And therefore one has to understand all these things will bring peace. And peacefully you shall be able to preach the gospel to others also and to your own family. My brothers, my sister, prayerfully let us remember one important thing and today's message is Use the armor of God for your victory. When you use the armor of God, you will see your life is going to be victorious. Even if you are sick, you will come out of sicknesses. Even if you have problems, you will come out of your problems. Punish your problems. Name whatever problems may be. In this world, everybody will suffer, Jesus said. But we can come out when we have the whole, whole armor of God. You fail to have the armor, you will be suffering, 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 and end will go with their suffering. Losses, 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 and you will go under the cross and finish your life. But today, God is saying to you, you shall be victorious, you can be victorious, use the whole armor of God and be victorious. Amen. Close your eyes and see after this. Loving, Loving Father, I thank you for this message. I will carry the whole armor of God and I will live accordingly. And I know my God will fight the battle and we will be victorious. I will be victorious. Help me to carry the armor of God. Help me to use the armor of God. I shall be victorious. I shall be successful. I shall be blessed. Thank you Jesus for giving me the armor. I will use the armor of God. In Jesus almighty name we pray. Let's all say together, Amen. Amen. Let's give a big hand of praise to the Lord.